Hi viewers, uh, this lecture is about Annex 17 on security. Aviation security is a combination of measures and human and material resources in order to safeguard civil aviation against acts of unlawful interference. Unlawful interference could be act of terrorism, sabotage, threat to life and property, communication of false threat, bombing, etc. So Annex 17 is on security. The annex to the Chicago, which contains the standards and recommended practices for security is annex 17. Security is defined as the safeguarding civil aviation against the act of unlawful interference. This objective is achieved by a combination of measures and human and material resources. General principles. Objectives of security. Each contracting state shall have as its primary objective, the safety of passengers, crew, ground personnel and general public in all matters related to safeguarding against act of unlawful interference with civil aviation. Each contracting state shall establish an organization and develop and implement regulations, practices and procedures to safeguard civil aviation against act of unlawful interference, taking into account the safety, regularity and efficiency of flights. Each contracting state should, whenever possible, arrange for the security measures and procedures to cause a minimum of interference with or delay to the activities of the international civil aviation. International cooperation. Each contracting state shall ensure that requests from other contracting states for additional security measures in respect of a specific flight by operators of such other states are met as far as practicable. The requesting state shall give consideration to alternative measures of the other state that are equivalent to those requested. Each contracting state shall cooperate with other states in the development and exchange of information concerning national civil aviation security programs, training programs, quality control programs as necessary. Each contracting state shall establish and implement procedures to share with other contracting states threat information that applies to the aviation security interest of those states to the extent practicable. National organization and appropriate authority. Each contracting state shall establish and implement a written national civil aviation security program for the purpose to safeguard civil aviation operations against act of unlawful interference through regulation, practices and procedures which take into account the safety, regularity and efficiency of flights. Each contracting state shall designate and specify to ICAO an appropriate authority within its administration which will be responsible for the development, implementation and maintenance of the National Civil Aviation Security Program. Airport operations. Each contracting state shall require each airport serving civil aviation to establish, implement and maintain a written airport security program, which is appropriate to meet the requirements of the National Civil Aviation Security Program. Each contracting state shall ensure that an authority at each airport serving civil aviation is responsible for coordinating the implementation of security controls at that airport. Aircraft operations. Each contracting state shall ensure that commercial air transport operators providing services from that state have been established, implemented and maintained a written operator security program which meets the requirements of the National Civil Aviation Security Program of that state. Airport design. The state is required to ensure that airport design requirements, including architectural and infrastructure related requirements necessary for the implementation of security measures are integrated into the design and construction of new facilities and alterations to the existing facility at airports. Preventive security measures, prohibited objects, 
Each contracting state shall establish measures to prevent weapons, explosives, or any other dangerous devices, articles, or substances which may be used to commit an act of unlawful interference. The carriage or bearing of which is not authorized from being introduced by any means whatsoever on board an aircraft engaged in civil aviation. Protection of cargo, mail, and other goods. States must protect cargo, mail, and other goods by taking the following security controls. Screening prior to being loaded onto the aircraft, approval and security screening of agents or known consigners, and access control. Law enforcement officers. Contracting state should ensure that the carriage of weapons on board aircraft by law enforcement officer or any other authorized person acting in the performance of their duties requires special authorization in accordance with the laws of the state involved. The pilot in command is notified as to the number of armed person and their seat locations. Additionally, all en route states as well as departure and destination states and the aerodrome authorities must approve the transit of armed security personnel. Passengers and their baggage. Each contracting state is required to ensure adequate measures exist to control the transfer and transit of a passenger and their cabin baggage to prevent unauthorized articles being taken on board aircraft engaged in international civil aviation. States are also to ensure that passengers reach a security hold area after the security screening at airport has been applied. If passengers leave security hold area, the passengers and the baggage will be re-screened before boarding an aeroplane. Access. States are required to establish procedures and identification systems to prevent unauthorized access by persons or vehicles to the air side of an aerodrome serving international civil aviation and other areas of importance to the security of the aerodrome. Checked baggage and other goods. States are required to establish measures to ensure that operators do not transport the baggage of passengers who are not on board unless the baggage is stored in separate compartments from the passengers and it has been the subject of other security control measures. Deportees and persons in custody. States are required to establish procedures to ensure that the operator and the pilot in command are informed when deportees and person in custody are traveling so that the appropriate security measures can be enforced. It is normal practice that deportees and person in custody are embarked first and before any passengers. Management of response to acts of unlawful interference in each contracting state shall establish measures when reliable information exists that an aircraft may be subject to an aircraft to the act of unlawful interference to safeguard the aircraft if it is still on the ground and to provide as much prior notification as possible of the arrival of such aircraft to relevant airport authorities and air traffic service of the state concern if the aircraft has already departed. Each contracting state shall take appropriate measures for the safety of passengers and crew of an aircraft which is subjected to an act of unlawful interference while on ground in the territory of the contracting state until their journey can be continued. As for rules of the year, unlawful interference, an aircraft which is being subjected to unlawful interference shall endeavor to notify the appropriate air traffic service unit of this fact. Any significant circumstances associated therewith and any deviation from the current flight plan necessitated by the circumstances in order to enable the air traffic service unit to give priority to the aircraft and to minimize the conflict with other aircraft. Actions by pilot in command. If situation permits, the pilot in command should attempt to continue flying on the assigned track and at the assigned cruising mm -hmm. level, at least until able to notify an air traffic service unit or uh, within radar coverage. If pilot in command is departing from the assigned train, he should attempt to broadcast warnings on the emergency frequency, use other equipment on board such as transponders, data links, and when circumstances permitted, uh, permits and proceed in accordance with the promulgated applicable spatial procedures for in-flight contingencies. In absence of such regional procedures, proceed at a level which differs from the cruising levels normally used for IFA flights in the area by 1000 feet if above flight level 290 or by 500 feet if below flight level 290.
operation of aircraft part 1 international commercial air transport as per this security of the flight crew compartment aeroplane search procedure uh, checklist for procedures to be followed for searching suspicious object for possible sabotage an operator shall establish and maintain a training program for crew members to deal such situations reporting acts of unlawful interference without delay to local authorities as per annex 9 facilitation transit and transfer of passengers and crew may remain temporarily without being subject to inspection formalities except for aviation security measures or in special circumstances contracting state should ensure that airport and aircraft operator and public authorities provide training to the relevant personnel concerning the identification and management of unruly passengers including recognition and diffusing of escalating situations and crisis containment other references to security which is as per doc 4444 pans atm a traffic control unit shall maintain full and complete coordination and personnel shall use their best judgment in handling emergency situations an aircraft known or believed to be in a state of emergency including being subjected to unlawful interference shall be given priority over other aircraft by a traffic control unit a traffic service personnel shall be prepared to recognize any indication of the occurrence of unlawful interference with an aircraft they can verify with the special ssr codes of 7700 or 7500 ats unit shall promptly attend to request by or to anticipated needs of the aircraft including request for relevant information relating to air navigation facilities procedures and services along the route of flight and at any aerodrome of intended landing and shall take such action as is necessary to expedite the conduct of all phases of this flight a traffic service unit shall also transmit and continue to transmit information pertinent to the safe conduct of the flight without expecting a reply from the aircraft monitor and plot the progress of the flight and inform the other adjacent air traffic control units airline operator rescue coordination center and designated security officials about the same as per annex 14 an isolated aircraft parking position is to be designated for the parking of aircraft which are subject to the unlawful interference the position of shall be never less than 100 meter from the other parking positions it should be away from the aviation fuel uh, utilities and other aircraft or installation the taxi route shall be specified to pilot in command and it should be selected with a view to minimize any security risk to the public or other aircraft and installations Thank <laughs> you.